we, we sent the units for a structure fire. They thought their oven was on fire and was exploding. Come to find out there was some smoke coming from the oven. Once they investigated, they did find a loaded weapon in the oven. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but what had that weapon done? It did fire from the heat, so it did shoot off a few rounds in the oven. What, what's kind of the protocol after that? I mean, when, when the fire EMS finds something like that? Well, that's where police came involved, and that's kind of why we're not talking that much about the incident itself, because now it becomes a police matter. Really, what we found was one a surprise to us. We want to make sure the safety of our uh, folks responding to these types of calls. They weren't expecting that to be the situation. But, you know, the couple of safety messages with that is, one, gun safety, to make sure your guns are locked up and secured in a safe location. I would not say an oven is a safe location. Plus the height of it, children could access an oven easily. Then also the fire hazard of storing anything in the oven. We, we see this, uh, you know, not on a regular basis, but we've seen it before where people put items in the oven for storage, forget they're in there, turn it on to preheat, and we get a call for, you know, smoke in a building, in a, in a house, an apartment. Um, could be just even like pans. They have nowhere to put these pans, they stick them in the oven, you preheat, they heat up extremely hot, they start putting out, you know, some nasty smoke. I'll, I'll, I'll try to focus more on that. Yeah. Did, did the majority of calls that fire get, I mean, are they mostly kitchen related? So our number one fire call is cooking related. So that's our number one call in Chesterfield County is cooking related fires. You know, a lot of times just people stepping away from the stove. You know, there's a lot of different messages that we try to share on these, knowing that in Chesterfield County it's the number one um, incident that we run for cause of fire is, you know, don't store your fire extinguisher right there next to your stove. A lot of times people put it in a cabinet next to the stove thinking that they're close. But if that, if it's on fire and it's small enough for you to put it out, you're not going to be able to get to that fire extinguisher. The other thing is, if you notice, people put, put spices and stuff above the stove in the cabinets above the, the stove top. Therefore, you're reaching for those spices. There's a chance that your clothes and other items can catch on fire trying to reach over that. So those are a few messages we put around cooking fires to help prevent it. Always cooking with grease seems to be one of the typical causes. People forgetting, falling asleep, or stepping away, cooking with grease, and then it ends up um, causing a fire. Let me ask again more kind of specific to this. Obviously, yeah. you probably don't see guns and, and ovens too often, but it is occasionally you're saying that folks do store items in a stove and, and why yeah. that's a bad idea. Yeah, we do. We People put all types of things in stoves. Either they're cleaning up and they have nowhere to put it, so they store it in there thinking they'll take it out at a later time, or they have big pans like for turkeys and things like that that don't fit in the little drawer below it. So they go, well, put it in there, I'll take it out when I'm gonna cook, and they forget, or somebody else uses the stove that is not you know, normally aware of that situation. Then they preheat the oven, it gets to a few hundred degrees, and either it catches on fire the item that's in there, or at least causes it to, you know, some smoke. Um, let me think back to this, this particular call. Sure. Uh, w once they discovered that, did they back, did, did fire and EMS back out, police come in and handle it, or? Yeah, so initially they, they weren't aware of, of the weapon in the stove, so they did what they would do normally, is, you know, check for fire, check for extension to make sure no fire got in the cabinets, in the walls, um, remove any smoke from, from the area, and then when they went to investigate to see what would have caused this fire to start, since the, the resident didn't say they, they hadn't started cooking yet, um, they opened it and found it. At that point, you know, they kind of turned this over to police to, to, to retrieve the weapon and then to kind of investigate what, what happened with it. Um, do you know how many folks were home when this happened? Yeah, do. Lauren, do you know how many folks were home? I don't. Um, were there any, any injuries or anything like There were that? no injuries, luckily. Um, and what was the extent of the damage caused by this? Uh, minor, it was mostly to the um, stove itself. So the stove was removed and you know, that was where the minor damage was. Gotcha. All right. Uh, anything I'm missing that I should be asking? Um, Folks are going to read this story and yeah. want to know something that I didn't ask. Um, no, I think that that's pretty much about the incident itself. I mean, it's pretty minor incident without that. If that wasn't in there, then, you know, the incident itself wouldn't have been substantial. There wasn't a lot of damage, a lot of fire. But you think about it, you know, a, a bullet going through the side depends on which way the gun was stored. It could have come out and injured someone very easily and, you know, wouldn't even been aware of what happened. I mean, you might not know the incident. I mean, yeah. the, the, it heated up. Did they just discharge in the gun, or did they? I mean, did they come out the the nozzle? The... It, came out. It, it came out. It came out. Yeah. 
Yeah. So five it was five shots. Yep. Yeah, five rounds went. And I'll talk uh, to police about. I'll get them to talk about safe storage and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, I, I don't yeah. know if that's probably something you, you guys come in contact with a lot when you're going to call about safe storage. I mean, I guess in fires, so, so, you want your you know guns should be in a fire safe too, just for for the fire. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we run structure fires, and there's a lot of times people will let us know, hey, we have a gun here, we have ammunition here. We're aware of it. But, um, you know, typically it, it's not an issue. It's more of the, the safety storing a gun safely. You know, I don't know if it was locked or not, but either way, it was in a location that wasn't high, wasn't in a safe, wasn't locked somewhere. So, you know, we, well, let, me, let me ask you a question yeah. then concerning uh, gun storage and fires. I mean, obviously fires burn down structure, but what does, what can fire do to a firearm and ammunition? Yeah, obviously in this case, you can see where it set it off. We don't typically have that. I mean, a lot of fires we have at structure fires, there, there are, there is gun and there is ammunition in these fires. I mean, it, a lot of people have, you know, weapons in their house. It's not something we typically deal with. It's not usually an issue. I'm thinking in this case, maybe because it, the heat was so right on that weapon, there was no there was nowhere. There was no air movement. It was, you know, kind of sealed in a oven. Is my, um, is why I kind of suspect that was an issue. You know, I don't know if it was just um, the rounds. I don't, I don't have the details of where the rounds so were that went off. Issue of right. It's it's not. It's out. not. You would think about it because people do tell us, hey, I got some ammunition in the garage in the closet. We don't typically have an issue with it.